Looks like we have a quorum. We can open up tonight's public hearing. And let's see what we have. No, I don't have this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start with the, the top of the agenda. Or I'll make sure actually Mr. LaPrette is with us. Oh, there you are. Of course. Um, 189 Park Street. Virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, April 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of the town of North Reading. North Reading High School, 189 Park Street, North Reading, MA, map 42, parcel 140, for a variance to allow an illuminated sign for replacement of the existing sign in accordance with section 200-80A and 200-83 of the North Reading zoning bylaw. And Mr. LaPrette, I believe you are the applicant for the town here. I drove by the just 20 minutes ago, the existing sign. So if you would be so kind, tell us, uh, tell us about the new sign, the new proposed sign. Thank you very much. I, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to speak on behalf of the school department, the high school, the middle school, uh, the graduating classes of 2011, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 that have all contributed to a new uh, electronic sign that would go in the current location of the sign that you see here, the existing sign, uh, which is also an illuminated sign, which is lit at night, as we probably know. Um, so, you know, ultimately, the, the new sign is an updated uh, sign. It includes the middle school as it is a shared campus now. Uh, that that, that uh, demo that you have there um, on the screen now, it actually says North Reading Middle School and High School across the top. So that's un unfortunately a document. It's the same size, it's the same um, uh, specs, but uh, the sign does include the middle school. Um, and the middle school is on board with this request as well as all, as I said, of the previously mentioned uh, graduating classes. So, you know, the, the existing sign um, is, is nice and it allows for communication, but the hope is to have a more contemporary look, a more contemporary uh, way to message and uh, it's electronic. So uh, one doesn't have to traipse across the field in the snow and manually change the sign and get the letters and uh, do all that fun stuff. Um, and can just, you know, it allows for, I think, a lot more effective and efficient messaging. Um, while the uh, software for the, um, I don't know if that's on, oh, okay, yeah, it's not on my screen. Well, no, I, was software, thinking, I was trying to get rid of it too. Yeah, You're sure. not alone. <laughs> The software allows for, you know, kind of a lot of bells and whistles, but it's not something that I would be looking to include. I think we're looking for simple messaging. You know, you've probably seen these kind of signs at various locations, high schools, et cetera. I, I've been at a number of schools recently. As you, as you may know, we've been conducting our assistant principal search. Uh, we went to a number of schools that have these very same signs. Um, and, you know, they can be kind of, very, very boring in their messaging. And I think that's certainly be my intent is that is to allow the spirit of the message to carry, you know, your attention rather than um, starbursts and things and um, anything that might be distracting to a driver. As you know, the, the police have approved of this, the safety uh, officer, uh, Officer King uh, is on board with this. So there's a lot of think positives in this request. Um, Mr. Connolly, the, the uh, Assistant Superintendent for Finance um, and, uh, is, uh, is also on the call uh, here if he wants to add something in. But I hope that I've given, given enough of a presentation and I hope that the documents that you have already are kind of enough for me to take questions and to do the next step in the process, I suppose, which I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, 
Thank, Thank you, you Mr. LaPratt. Could I, if I could just add a few quick um, notes as well. This is Michael Conley, Assistant um, Director of Finance and Operations. Um, so as Mr. LaPratt has, has mentioned, um, we're definitely excited about um, sort of bringing the, the sign to a more kind of updated contemporary version of what's there. Um, I just wanted to note also that the, the school committee has um, been aware of the, the acquisition and the, the hopeful replacement and they're, they're on full on board support, um, as well as some other um, committees in town, the, certainly the Hillview Commission, um, who actually sort of governs the, the area of land that um, the sign sits on currently with the within with inside the fence in the stadium they're they're in full support and have been updated about what we're looking to do um as well as you know the parks and recreation so it's sort of been a uh, many boards and committees have been part of the the decision and the design and and everyone is is on is on board and um in support of what we're looking to do so great Thank you, Mr. Connolly. And I would say first, uh, thank you for all the students and graduates who have raised money and dedicated money um, to, to the new sign. That's a um, great effort on their part. I know we'll have some questions from the board and then we'll, um, then we'll open it up to the community to the extent there's any uh, questions there. Oh, one thing I just wanted to reconfirm, Mr. Lepret, I believe you said it's going to be the same size as the existing sign and in the same location. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep. There, it may be it may be kind of a half an inch wider or half an inch taller, but it's essentially the same, you know, almost uh, inch for inch the same size. Perfect. And then I think the one of the the biggest questions for us as a board, since we've we've had a, a sign issue in front of us very recently, is in terms of refresh rates and um, what is the, what's the intent in terms of how things are displayed, when they might change over. Um, you mentioned no starbursts and, um, but is there you know, moving action? Is there, is this a- um, Like a scroll? A scroll, exactly. Yeah. Tell me yeah. what, a, what we might expect to see. So like I said, um, so you know what, I can let, I, I wonder if I can. Do I mean to stop sharing? Yeah, I'm, it might, might take me a second to, lo to, to log in. I, I made a, um, I did a little bit of a Google thing so we can kind of see it. Uh, Lovely, I made thank a, you. Yeah, if, if I can, if you can stop, I mean, I guess, let me let me see. Yeah, uh, we, I might, we, I might we can disappear. With you. I might disappear here for a second. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I hope not. Um, we'll be here. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so again, like I said, as I, as I, as I pull this open, um, the, the, there's a lot of options with the software, but I get, I get the, um, concerns around, you know, flip rates and things like that. So what I, what I would do is certainly, um, you know, minimize as, you know, as much as we got, again, once a message that's up there now is up there for a couple of weeks. My hope is to at least be able to rotate it, you know, maybe once a day, uh, or if I can't do it, I'll do it at night and you know, do it at like 2 a.m. And then we can just have a new message every day. I, I wouldn't mind having maybe two messages a day, uh, but I wouldn't be looking to kind of have a ton of stuff on there. I'm just looking for the, um, the my folder that I, that I put all this in. Hang on one second. Um, oh, you know what I think? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I know what I need to do. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I am going to log in to my account.
I appreciate your patience. Sorry. Uh, no, no. I will say while you're looking, um, just to put a couple of things into the record, Hillview yeah. Commission did write a letter to, to the board um, supporting the replacement of the manual scoreboard with an upgraded digital version. Um, as they say, it's located on Hillview Enterprise land at the high school. Um, and their understanding that it will be the same size and place as the current one and using the existing concrete pad. Is that little tidbit of information correct as well? That is correct, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Mr. Murphy, um, or actually Sergeant Tim King, the safety officer wrote a memo to Chief Murphy at the police department. Uh, they reviewed the documents regarding the installation of the LED signboard in the current same area as the current sign at the, by the football field, and they find no reason to believe the sign will pose a public safety risk to motorists traveling on Park Street. Okay. Our, uh... So our colleagues over at the CPC raise a question that I think we had as well about yep. daytime versus nighttime use. Is this going to be on 24 seven? Is it? Uh, is yeah, I mean, I, I'm totally, I'm in totally. The yeah. I mean, it's, uh, the, so the sign is lit now mm -hmm. and, you know, must shut off at some time. I don't, when I get there in the morning, I, you know, uh, it's still dark in the morning when I get there, the, the sign is lit. So. I don't have Sonny, Sonny Campagna, who I believe is on the call. He may have the specific specs around what time the sign is currently lit now. Um, but. Um, and it may be 24 seven. I just can't, I can't tell you that I, that I would know that if it's lit yeah, at yeah, two yeah. in the morning. I don't think, I don't think it's 24 seven, but again, it's there, it's on, it's on in the morning when I get there. So, um, but again, I, 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 uh, I'm just, of course I, I'm having to kind of grab this password. Um, hang on one sec. Sorry. Not a problem. Sometimes technology is our friend. Sometimes <laughs> it makes it a challenge. Better you sharing this than me. So. Okay. So again, I, what I think I'd like to do is to be able to have the um, uh, you know the support of this you know and then and then you know in our discussion here we can say yeah we like this or we don't like that you know um, okay. reset my password <laughs> one now. As a uh, okay, oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I said I did the I did the two the two part security so that nobody could uh, <laughs> you know what I mean hijack the hijack the messaging. So of course I just got my new I got the the text. So we're close. Thank you. And then. Okay, great. All right. So I think if I can request to do a, um, 
a screen share, right? Let's see. Let me go back. They got a lot of tabs open here. Um, Kathy, if you would let Mr. Lepret share his screen. Where am I? Let's see. I got a lot going on here. Where's the... Kind of close it. Let me see if I can help him. Um, I'm looking for the, I'm looking for the, the Zoom. Is it like, how do I reconnect with the Zoom? Oh. Um, Join a meeting. I'm kind of, I lost the, I like lost my Zoom connection somehow. You're still with I us. Still so see you. You'll be there. Yeah, interesting. I uh, I am not unless it's oh there it is. Yeah, the I, I, co I covered you up. That's all. <laughs> all right, how are we doing? All right, here we go. So if you, if I can do the screen share, so you should see um, the screen share down the bottom, maybe. Yep. Yeah, hang on one sec. Yeah. Here we go. You know, we use Google Meets at school. That's why I'm a little. Uh, that's why I'm a little out of it here. Okay. So can you see, uh, can you see this now? Yeah. The playlist, my playlist. So the go hornets and something that yeah. looks maybe like a sunset. Yeah. Factory test. Yeah. So I kind of made March, April and RHS. So these would be kind of, um, you know, like this, this, uh, let's do this. Like that would be, you know, kind of the white, the white letters on the black background. Um, that's one kind of, you know, you can, oh boy. Uh, let me just do that. Um, uh, one sec. Um, Try going to that tab to your left. Yeah, I'm just gonna get the. Oh yeah, okay. sign for North Reading High School up at the top. One to one to the it? left. Of, that yeah, could no, be. that's the email. Uh, I think right. I closed it by mistake. Here it comes. Oh, you see my security code? That's not good. All right, everyone, advert your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just in case time. I just in case I goof it up. Okay, here we go. You guys are very patient. Um, all right. So these, so so if you can look and say kind of like, so here it is, kind of five seconds, no transition. So there's no like scroll or there's no. This is go hornets. Um, you can pro. I guess the, the point is you can you can program this to do anything we want. No transition is. It's not going to phase up. It's not going to fade in. It's not going to fade out. It's just going to switch. Um, and we can decide like this is this is hours. This is minutes. This is seconds. If you can see I'm on this one here, this text and media uh, parent teacher conference. So as I as I decide to edit this. And I want to. Um, talk about. You know, this is going to be on for 23 hours, and 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 that's it. That's the only thing we see. So again, the, the programming capabilities, or if we say, you know what, we really don't like the, we really can't see the white on the black. Haven't mm -hmm. sure we'd see what it looks like. I've seen other people kind of do green with white or a different color. We, I mean, we want something that's again not going to be a distraction, but it's going to be something that can clearly communicate the message. And I think there's going to be a little bit of figuring that out, right? What works mm -hmm. best. Um, so my hope is that again, that you approve the sign, you uh, you know trust in me as the high school principal to say like yeah I uh, I totally understand what the expectations would be and what was going to 
what's outside of what's reasonable and what's inside of what's reasonable or work with these current specs. Um, and we, and we work together on kind of like saying, you know, Hey, that's, um, you know, that's fine. Or, Hey, we need you to kind of adjust it. Yeah, so that's, that's very helpful, Mr. Lippert, just to you know, get the idea. And it, it seems like there's, you know, you really have so much control over the programming. And so if the board were to make a condition that these only turned over, you know, whatever it is, yeah. um, that's, that's something that you can do. Um, and I definitely, I want to open this up to the the board here but what we're what the parameters that we're working in is that we're not supposed to have moving or flashing signs under the under the bylaws or um yeah I know we, I would animation that. absolutely yeah that our, our current our current guidance doesn't let us have a like movie yeah. clip then. no 100 percent. but but again if it were it's it's going to change at some point. It just it wouldn't Absolutely. change with it wouldn't change with animation or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Bob Maria, the questions, thoughts for Mr. LaPrat. So, uh, just a couple of different ones. Um, who's going to maintain the, um, the the device? So, in other words, the worst thing is if it it goes faulty, you're going to you could run a stretch without any message. So all you just have is a blank board or even extending that out to the um, summer season. Is it just going to be simply North Reading middle school and high school? Because currently with the, um, with the block lettering, you know, you can leave a message up there year round. I mean, it, it's just a more of a, uh, just a thought on, on that. I'm just wondering if there's a, a largest plan here or is it just going yeah, to be well, I, I, yeah i mean i would say this i mean certainly the the school administration calendar is 12 months and there's messages over the summer there's certainly you know um summer you know summer messages around i mean and, and i could i you know this isn't this isn't um at times the town has said hey can you put a sign up about uh town meeting you mm -hmm. know so there i'm certainly open up to um, if, if there if was a specific message around like a summer event that, that we wanted to, to put up there and help advertise, I'm happy to do that. But again, with respect to kind of something on the summer that said, hey, you know, have a safe summer or hey, AP kids, you know, stay on top of those summer assignments. I mean, there's all, you know, there's always messaging that uh, at least at the high school level that there's important messages to get out there. Uh, freshman orientation and, in, in, you know, the start of fall sports, uh, get your health forms in, you know what I mean? That type of stuff. So even in the summer, there's, there's, there's a message that uh, is, 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 is important to be shared. Um, and then of course there's, there's the, through the school year. If that's your question, the, Bob, I, I think that's your question. Yep, that's fine. And the maintenance of the device, if there's, uh, do, you, do you have somebody on staff or is it gonna be all outsourced to the vendor? With respect to, if there's a if there's a problem with the technology, yes, yeah. So that's part of the contract. Uh, the software is included in the the purchase, so you get you get tech support. Um, and I, you know, I mean, I, I would say just if, if our existing sign, if there were a problem with our existing sign, you know, we would we would be um, the school department would be be addressing that, and I, the same would be for this. I have a couple of questions, just just basic ones. Um, yeah, so with regard to, I guess, kind of the life of this machine, how long, I mean, do you ever have to get a new one or do you just keep updating the software? Like, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, we can look at the specifics of the contract of the software, but my, my understanding is, is that it's pretty much a lifetime support uh, component. That was one of the reasons that we went with this, with this product. Um, my other question, I think, is kind of a funny one, I think, maybe. Um, there's no way anyone else could ever get access to write anything on this, right? <laughs> well, that's you? what I was kind of saying. I've set it up for the two-code uh, authorization right now, you know, for the login. And, and there's only three people that, that have, uh, have an account right now. It's myself, the middle school principal, and Mr. Conley. That's okay. it. Um, okay. And, and again, like, 
I, I don't know who else would need one. Yeah, um, I, I was just thinking some kind of like funny story with like some high schooler getting it. I'm just, I don't yeah, know. I mean, and again, I think that's why they, that's why they have that two, two code author, uh, authentication and those security steps for exactly that reason. Um, my only concern would be the safety, but it seems like that's been covered. It seems like the police are okay with it. So I don't know. Well, I appreciate your patience as I <laughs> found my found my samples here. Absolutely, Bob, um, you here as well? Actually, yeah. I may have lost. Oh, here you are. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Should I? So why I think, don't I come off the sharing? Is that is that? I'm going to do that. You can leave it up. That's fine. Okay. One moment. So I guess the question that we have, to, you know, the, the distinction to be made here is between the, the presentation that was made by the um, the vendor for the plaza at um, the shop and uh, stop and shop plaza where they wanted to place a signage, digital signage, if you will, and within the parking lot. And um, when I first saw the this application, you know, that was the immediate thing because that was most recent to us. But there was a distinction there in that there uh that was more in the way of advertising for purposes as opposed to um civic promotion um paid for advertising uh, movement within the messaging i don't we had no way to trace who was going to control the messages and the displays so uh, i'll say this for the applicant he, he seems to have addressed that because it seems it's going to go through him which you know, and I think the the statement of it being pretty um, simple and straightforward in in a sense. Um, that's not to say that we should be reluctant to try to make good use of the of the tech and the display creativity. But um, as Maria noted, and and the chair pointed out from the the letter um, from uh, the police officers, safety officer, it, it seems like they've addressed most of the issues. And again, the, the one thing that I had a concern with was, you know, being clear about the purpose of the, the messages in terms of frequency changing. And again, the distinction I'd want to make for the, for, op, for the record, if you will, is that unlike the stop and shop proposal, uh, this isn't directed towards advertising as much as it is public messaging. And I think that could be noted. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, and I, I think something that we would need to talk about as a board is refresh rate. I mean, I, I think the idea of changing in the, in the evening or at night if it were a daily message, I, I think that would have very little impact and you know, maybe more changes, um, but at some, some reasonable interval, which we could discuss. Um, I do want to, while we, while we are here to see if there's anyone from the community who had a question or comment, if you do, you can essentially raise your hand in the, in the Zoom um, program and Kathy can, let you in. And if you are interested in speaking, just please say your name and address for the record. Any takers? We love those crickets. It literally sounds like there are crickets in the background. So the window open, I think it's spring. We may be hearing the, them or the peepers. Maybe that's my back there. I can't really see everyone with his um, screen sharing. All right. Well, um, then we wrap we a guess. There we go. And anyone, anyone going once, going twice? <laughs> no, All right. Um, I do not see any <laughs> very quiet public this evening. No comments from the public. Um, so it is just down to to our board to discuss 
this and let me see before we kind of go into our discussion um if there was anything else in the file if we have something from okay cpc cpc recommends asking about the expected hours of illumination which we did um which as far as we know, it's 24 seven. Um, and it is possible that the brightness may need to be adjusted if there are impacts on abutting residences. And the way this is, I, I agree, if there, if there are, it should be considered. The way this is cited, if there's, um, remind me, Mr. Mr. LaPrade, I know I just drove by it, but are the, is the, is it, um, the faces perpendicular the faces, to the to yeah, 20. it's perpendicular to the road. So the faces okay. face along the road per se, you know. So, so there would not be anything going direct. It's not going across the road. Behind, That's right. It's not, it's not the blasting across the street. Gotcha. Okay. That's good to know. And dun, dun, dun. what's there one more thing in here? I think we got the police chief. I think we had something from our building is in here, but I now can't find it. Oh, here we go. Um, ba, ba, ba. Mr. Noel doesn't have any issues the building permit other than um, it falls under our purview. Which, thank you, Mr. Noel. What, Kathy? Oh, nothing. One of the people here were leaving. <laughs> okay. Um, well, good night to them. And okay. all right. I um, I think we can close the public hearing since seeing that we don't have any more any comments from the from the audience and um, move towards making a decision up or down on this and any conditions that we think are appropriate. Uh, that being said, we have a, a motion to close the public hearing. I'll move to close the uh, the public hearing. And we have a second. I second that. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all right. So um, to discuss amongst ourselves, Well, so it seems it, it seems as if they've covered all the the spots that again it seems kind of cliche to say that but it you know the <laughs> the, the refresh the, the you know the refresh rate is uh, while it still remains undefined it doesn't seem as if knowing that it's in the I would I would offer that since it's in the control of the um, uh, the principal and then you have, you know, if there is a problem, we know where to go for correcting or addressing that. Mm -hmm. And again, I hate to draw the distinction, or maybe it's appropriate to do that with, that wasn't the case in our most recent discussion of a more modern digital sign, which is what this is. And it, mm -hmm. it, I, I remember, expressly saying in that prior meeting that it was just a small digital billboard. Uh, this doesn't seem to be that. And even if you were to believe that it were, uh, it's promoting interest of the town, uh, not the interest of a, um, uh, you know, a profit base, if you will. Uh, I know there was a note, note that uh, Kathy had put along about the recreation having and interested because of summer programming, a lot of that takes place on the field. So, you know, ultimately, you know, if the prince, I think, you know, the only, it seems to me is that all the issues as to use will go through uh, the principal. And um, I would suggest that maybe some kind of policy guideline be devised by his office or in conjunction with various town interests. Uh, so there's a clear understanding of um, of access and use by 
interest other than, but it is on the high school property, although that, that shared, it's a shared field for various reasons. That's, you know, I don't think it's enough to prevent the approval of the application today, but it's something that might be um, an appropriate um, task to undertake just because uh, it, it could present as a, an issue in the future that could be easily addressed in the present. Oh, that's, I think that's, Can that's I interrupt Bob for a second? Ahead, yeah, I, so I would imagine I work with Tim King, uh, the safety officer, on, on a number of safety issues around the school. We plan, um, you know, uh, Grand March events, we plan, uh, you know, events where there's going to be a lot of uh, traffic at the high school and things like that. So, kind of my relationship in, in contacting Tim and, and following up with him about, you know, what's the feedback on a refresh rate that looked like this, or as we craft policy, what might, you know, what are the things that I want to pay attention to? So I would see that as a collaborative effort and, and you know, um, you know, certainly be working in line with what you're comfortable with too, of course. And I'm assuming that that's, that he would have a handle on those type of things as well. And if he doesn't, then, then we'll, yeah, we'll we'll say, hey, this is what we look. This is this is what looks safe to us. Are you okay with this? I think it's hard to, um, you know, as as you've said, Bob, and it's it's like we really don't know what it looks like. I want to I want to see what the illumination is like. I want to see what this looks like. And if we say, oh, you know, that's really it's really kind of one message a day, great. Or um, you know, we really don't. You know, we can we can turn it over. You know, we can turn it over at three o'clock at dismissal because there's a lot of, you know, whatever. Or or turn it over at eleven p.m. Or the you know so. I think get in there and see what it looks like and then see what works and then craft some policy, as you said, around that. I think that that sounds great. I, um, Cause I think there's, there's probably a lot of content that you may want to get out there to the school community, to the community at large. Um, and this is a, a great forum to do it. It looks like exciting new piece of technology and it, there's probably gonna be a lot of fun sort of playing with it to say, all right, what can it do? And you know, maybe um, and you're gonna get to, to kind of play with that. Um, I think what my concern is, it would just want to make sure that we're not seeing something that's cycling through, yep. you know, every five seconds or even every minute on here's a new ad coming up. I mean, it's kind of, and also kind of sort of the, the, the decorum of being in the center of town. We want to, we're just not that flashy. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I totally get it. <laughs> anything else, uh, Maria? I think, we, I think this may have been addressed, but I just wouldn't want it to be disturbing anybody at nighttime that lived in the area if it was too bright. I don't really know what's over there. Um, as far as I know, residential, it's sort of like there's a street next to the high school, but I don't know if that's gonna, that would be affected by it. But my only concern would be if there'd be an opportunity to sort of like, yeah, really dim it down or turn it off if we needed to at night, just not to, to bother people. Yeah. And, and I think that's a very important concern. And I think it's something that we wanna include in our, in our decision that you know yeah. you have to use good faith efforts or use actual efforts right. to make sure that it's not having a negative impact Absolutely. on the surrounding community because that's that's one of our directives as a board is to make sure Agreed. this doesn't have a negative effect i mean i think what might be at least a guide right now is to say you know that the if we have a home football game those lights those stadium lights on or at least till 9 30 or 10 o'clock mm -hmm. and kind of use that as a guide when, when those are out maybe and then one more half an hour and then that's it or something mm -hmm. like that or when they're out the lights are so we can mm -hmm. again I, i'm totally uh amenable and understanding of those types of expectations all right um may i ask for a motion on this so um with regard to the application i move for the uh, zoning of board of appeals to um Grant the petition of the town of North Reading, in particular North Reading High School, 189 Park Street, uh, possesses a map 42, parcel 140, for a variance to allow an illuminated sign to replace the existing sign in accordance with chapter uh, section 200-80A and 200-83 of the uh, North Reading bylaws. We have a second. I second that motion. All right. All in favor? Bob Rain, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. And Jennifer Platt, aye. Well, 
Congratulations. We will write up a decision that will have some um, some conditions in it, but um, excited for you and the high school and the middle school. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much. And I want to, I want to, uh, I see some other faces that are on this uh, call here who've been very helpful. Jerry, thank you for providing the, the guidance around this process. Um, and I know that Mike's been a huge piece and I, and I know that there's, there's, a, there's other people on the call. I'll let you go. I am very uh, appreciative. Thank you. Great. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so I have much. To ask when is it expected? Well, we have the we have the install guys on standby. So, <laughs> all right. And, uh, what's going to happen with the old one? Uh, well, <laughs> I, you know what? The TBD. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I will say this. I, I think there's a there's some nostalgia in the town um, that that you know might have an interest in it. I I I don't have any. I mean, again, like it's. It's work. That old sign is work. So I'm not looking to move it and to re put it someplace else and to manually do all that. Like I, I, you know, I mean, I would say, you know, we could talk to the, you know, the uh, Hillview if they, say, if they essentially own the old sign, they get to want it back. I don't know, but uh, happy to have conversations with that. You know, <laughs> as they Way down the road. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good night. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone. Here we go. I think the next item that I have if, looks like a continued virtual public hearing will be held Thursday, April 14th, 7 p.m. on the petition of Robin Beckett Miller for a home occupation special permit to run her private counseling practice out of her home at 37 Southwick Road, North Reading. MA map 17, parcel 73, per article 200-42 of the North Reading Zoning Bylaws. So we have a Ms. Beck Miller with us this evening. That's me, yes you do. Hi, everybody. Lovely. Thanks for having nice me. Nice to have you here. Could you tell the board what it is, a little more, a little more detail, what you hope to do? Okay. Um, so uh, I am currently working uh, remotely as a mental health counselor out of uh, for a practice that is located in Medford, uh, and I work about 20 hours a week seeing clients remotely. I've been doing that pretty much ever since the pandemic started, actually like just after the pandemic started. So for the entirety of my employment there, I have been working virtually, and myself and my clients like it quite well, and it seems to be working well. Um, I'm interested in opening a very small uh, practice of my own in addition to that, that I pretty much am just interested in really only seeing like four clients. I think that's all I really have time to do right now, but kind of very gradually getting that up and running um, over the course of the next few years, uh, not in a big hurry. Um, it's going to be a completely virtual practice. Um, and I see adults primarily with um, mental health needs that are usually related to depression or anxiety. Um, and there will be no people coming to my home. <laughs> There'll be no uh, signage of any kind. Um, and I, yeah, I can't think of anything else that is really too relevant to talk about. So it's essentially what I'm already doing, but for myself, um, and I intend to continue to be part of the group practice because I, I like that. I like the you know colleagues and I like the supervision I get there. So that's what I'm trying to do. So it's all going to be by Zoom or some other video? Yeah, there's a, there's a platform that I use called Doxy, which is a medical platform mm -hmm. that sort of like scrubs everybody's information after we're done mm -hmm. and that works quite well. And occasionally I use um, uh, like Google Meet or something like that. Mm -hmm. but usually doxy works just fine or occasionally i have to use a phone if uh if we have problems with connections and things like that so from whatever i've, I've read of late it seems that those in your your line of work are in such demand yeah. and need particularly since pandemic started it seems like it has just up the the need level uh, it has for, definitely for folks like you so you know, great that you're out there um, as far as 
you know, we'll, we'll go through the, the specifics just to make sure you're, it sounds like you're familiar with the requirements under the zoning bylaws, but um, it's, it's, I think a lot of people are doing this, especially since um, pandemic started is doing a lot of online talking with yeah. other people. Yeah, and access for people that really need help has been, I mean, it's been sort of a godsend to a lot of people who can't leave their homes for a variety of reasons. So it's actually really, really helpful. And it's just, it just to go through the checklist, it's just you, no employees at the- Just me, the yep. Um, no more than 300 square feet in nope. the devoted, which would be hard to, and um, no display of goods, wear signs, Related, so no outdoor signage saying no. Robin's therapy here. <laughs> nope, nothing like that. Um, I imagine if I received mail, it would probably be able to fit in my mailbox and you know not be intrusive in any way. Do we have any um, any neighbors or butters on with us this evening that have a comment or question, Kathy? Again, just. If if you're here and want to comment or ask questions of the applicant, please just raise your virtual hand or even your literal hand and we'll find you. Um, Jen, can I ask you a question? Yes, you may. We had um, a woman come in today who received a home off, but she moved within town. So now she's gonna be coming before us again because it was specifically for her address. Is that something that you you do? Can we, some... let, let's let me think about that, and we'll okay. um, um, wrap up, finish up with Ms. Beck Miller. And we'll think about that one. Is that something that's on our agenda this evening? No, not okay. Tonight. All right, thanks. Um, so, no one from the audience. Any questions, Bob, Maria? No, actually, I don't. I don't have any. It seems very straightforward and clear cut. Um, and again, um, taking advantage of the way thing business is being done um, by so many of these home occupation in which people don't have to come to you physically. Um, I think it's just, it's, it, as, as the chair noted, uh, this just seems to be the, um, a trend which is, is most accommodating and actually um, accommodating not only to the users, but to the town in terms of being able to provide business opportunities for people without having to go astray or run outside the lines of zoning in our case. Mm -hmm. So I, I see it as a, a worthwhile um, permitted, uh, permitted uh, use. Thank you, Bob. Maria, any questions? I concur with everything Bob said. I agree. I don't, I see this is pretty straightforward. Thank you both. May I have a motion on this? Uh, motion to close the public meeting, Maria Lockhart. I guess we need to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Just uh, second, second, Bob Green. Perfect. And a motion on the um, application. So I know that, uh, I know that Kathy, the office today, um, drafted the same. So um, if you might bear with me just a moment. Um, so I move for the, um, uh, with regard to the petition of Robin Beck Miller, 37 Southwick Road, North Reading, Mass, map, map 17, partial 73 with special permit, home occupation or run for private counseling practice out of her home address. Pursuant to Article 200-42 of the North Reading Zoning Bylaws, attendant to this special permit, um, the uh, application's use of the premises for this will no other person other than the residential occupant shall be employed therein. No more than 300 square feet shall be devoted to such use. There should be no display of goods, wares, or signs related to the home occupation visible from the exterior, the special permit for the home occupation runs with the applicant, um, Beck Miller, and is no way transferable. Uh, and to be specific as addressed, there'll be no customers coming to visit the premises for services, and the permit itself shall be valid for a period of four years. 
Thank you, Bob. We have a second. I second this motion, Maria Lockhart. Thank you, Maria. All in favor? Bob? Bob Green, aye. Maria yeah. Lockhart, aye. And Jennifer Platt, aye. So Robin, congratulations. We will um, issue that, that decision. There's a 20 day appeal period, but best of luck with your continuing new practice. Excellent, thank you very much, everyone. And thanks, Kathy, for all of your help. No problem. It is great. All right, um, take care. And Kathy, I've, I've been thinking of your question as, as we were working through this. Uh, but I believe that since the special permit is, it's issued both to, as to the address and to the occupant, I believe our, our, someone who has an existing special permit who's now relocating someplace in town would need to come back again, again, essentially for the, for the public um, hearing and public input okay. so that neighbors in the new, new area would have an equal opportunity to um, voice concerns or, or questions about a, a proposed uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And again, um, most, you know, the, the whole point with these is that they don't, are not supposed to have any impact on the, on the residential neighborhood. This is a, you know, something that you can do within, within your home to, to operate your business without um, impacting your neighbors. So, um, but again, we want to make sure the neighbors have a, a chance to, to weigh in. Now it looks like we have another one. So next one is petition of Lisa, Lisa Nukuzek. I'm saying that wrong, but she will correct me in just That's a moment. Me. <laughs> so it's a virtual public hearing will be held Thursday, April 14th, 2022, 7 p.m. Petition of Lisa, last name to be confirmed, 3 Janice Ave North. Reading MA Map 45, parcel nine for a home office, special permit to run her medical billing office per article 200-42 North Reading Zoning Bylaws. Hello, Lisa. Hi, can you hear me? I can, and please tell me how you properly pronounce your last name after I butchered it. Nuka Cat. I didn't get that even close. All right, okay. beautiful. Um, um, I think you, you heard the last one, so you have a little idea what we're, what these are all about, if you can just tell us briefly what it is it's that we're doing. kind of funny because to follow after her, because that's what I do. I do mental health medical billing. So <laughs> the doctors will send me the charges and I upload them into the computer, send mm -hmm. them to a website where they go to the insurance companies and then I post the payments and send the patients the bills. There's, I work on a desktop computer in a back bedroom. It's very small. It's not any bigger than the desk and me. So and it's true, I no, it's no all me all no the time. Signs. No Just signage. No, okay. no signs. I don't even advertise. Everything I get is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that sounds like what we're looking for here. Uh, anyone, anyone from the community have a question comment? Okay, I'm going to go on record saying this is the quietest public hearing that I think I have mm -hmm. had or been at. <laughs> um, that being said, um, any further comments from the board? Just a question. Uh, how long have you been at in the, in the practice? How long have you been doing it? I actually started doing this in the billing service in 1989. It was located in North Reading. My former boss retired and gave me the business and I lived in a different town at the time. So I've been doing it continuously for 30 years almost. Fantastic. And it's always, and, and, uh, just you. I'm sorry? And yeah. Just gonna continue to expect it to just be you. I didn't expect to be doing it now, no. I never, it just sort of took off. All right, that, that sounds good to us. Um, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? A second, second. Bob Green. Sure. 
it's doubly doubly closed. And um, let's see, do we have a, we do have a draft motion. Which one's this? Do, 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 do. So if the chair would permit, I'd like to make a motion um, on the petition of the applicant, uh, the resident at 3 Janus Ave North Reading Mass, map, map 45 parcel nine for a special permit for home occupation to run her medical billing service out of her home address for article 200-42 North Reading zoning bylaws attendant to the dwelling for a home occupation shall have the usual and common mandatory conditions. No person other than the residential occupant shall be employed therein. Not more than 300 square feet shall be devoted to the business purpose. There should be no display of goods, wares, or signs related to the home occupation vis visible from the exterior. There will be the special permit runs with the applicant and it is no way transferable. Uh, there will be no customers coming to the premises and the special permit shall be valid uh, for a period of four years from its grant. Do I have a second? I, Maria Lockhart, second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? Bob, Bob Green, aye. Maria? Maria Lockhart, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. All right, Lisa, congratulations. The Thank you. 20 day appeal period, but best of luck with your business. Thank you so much. Have a nice night. You as well. Right. We're making a roll. And let's see. Did I skip? That was. So the remaining matters regard the uh, cryptocurrency application for business purposes and the uh, um, the bank's interest in uh, correcting uh, performance regulations for the lights, I believe. So let's do 158 Haverhill. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Oh. Sorry, my computer is freezing at just this precise moment. Madam Chair, if you want, I can introduce the motion. If you would, please, Bob, I appreciate it. So coming before the, the board to this evening on the petition, Dennis Friedrich for a home occupation special permit to run his cryptocurrency online business at his address, 158 Haverhill Street, North Reading, Mass. Map 54, parcel 20, pursuant to Article 200-42, North Reading Zoning Bylaws for a special permit for home occupation business purposes. Beautiful, and Mr. Friedrich, you're here with us. Yes. Right, this is, we're, we're Three in, a, three, three in a row, tell, tell us if you would, what you are doing. Yeah, happy to. I started a, a small business last year. Uh, it includes uh, cryptocurrency mining, digital asset management, um, and a little, bit of, a little bit of trading involved in there. It's, um, I'm sole proprietor of this. Um, it, it, it's pretty much uh, all, all digital. There is some hardware though. So I have about four computers running and different software running and uh, everything's pretty much done done between the uh, the hardware and, and the software and the internet. Great, and it's just you? It's just me, yes. Just you, all right. Um, you have no problem getting enough Wi-Fi and <laughs> service to make it, to keep everything running? Uh, yeah, I have uh, Verizon Fios, and that internet has been uh, impeccable, especially over the last couple of years. Good to know. I have to make a switch. <laughs> the, um, um, so it's just you inside your house, no signage, no, I mean, no cryptocurrencies displayed outside. Um, do we have? Anyone from the public with a question or comment? Right. 
Hearing none. Um, well, I would say this is a, you, you are the first one in front of this board for this particular use. So you're on the uh, <laughs> leading edge of, of North Reading Home Ox. Um, any questions, comments from the board? So uh, just for the record, um, and uh, attended to what Madam Chair uh, just made note to the applicant, the Community Planning Commission on in a, a memo dated April 11th of this year noted that the uh, commission does not object to the request provided the business adheres to the attendant bylaw. The, commi the commission did recommend asking the applicant to address whether infrastructure needs for his business are adequate since in packs to the electrical and internet services could be substantial if the activity of data mining for cryptocurrency is taking place. I just wanted to note that for the record as well as um, I lack any sense of sophistication to understand if there would be um, any any particular problem that could impact the community. I, I, I just appreciate maybe some insight from the applicant for that. Yes, of course. It's a good question, and it's the one that you know I certainly considered coming into this. So um, I, I can't think of any disruption to the neighborhood. Um, you know, it's no one would know other than my application and notification of the abutters list. Um, as I said, it says hardware and software that's running. Um, uh, the mining component of it is, um, you know, it does generate electricity. Um, it uses about the, the capacity of a couple space heaters. Um, so it's it's at a steady flow. So it's the amount I'm using is very reasonable for residential uh, house. If I wanted to expand that component, I'd have to find somewhere offsite, probably realistically, probably um, out of state. But in terms of what I've built here, I would it's call it you know uh, if you will you know startup early stage uh, business. If I choose to expand, I would take it uh, out of rent residential. But everything I have here proves as proof of principle for what what it could turn into. And is it nine to five or do you go do you go off market because of foreign trade? Yeah, well cryptocurrencies uh, will, will trade 24 seven. So it never it never goes off market. So this is not a, a full time uh, job for me. This is something that uh, the mining component runs um, at all times. It does uh, something called proof of work, which generates uh, in return for that work. It generates um, uh, coins of different of different types. Which get deposited, which can be used in different ways. So it's participant. Sorry, I thought a lot of jargon. Here. It's participation in a decentralized network and supporting um, asset transfer and, and sus sustaining those. So for me personally, it's just making sure that that part is running. And bigger part of it is just uh, software management of the digital tokens, where uh, security is a big part of it as well, since it's emerging technology. Thank you. Great, great, great question, Bob. And uh, again, I mean, if it's not not impacting your neighbors by the usage, <laughs> probably comparable to some of the holiday light designs we see out on occasion. But um, um, that sounds good. To me, that being said, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. We have a second. I second that motion, Maria Lockhart. Thank you, Maria. And um, may I have a motion on the on the application, Bob? So, with regard to the application um, on the petition of Den Dennis Friedrich, uh, 158 Haverhill Street, North Reading, Map 54, Parcel 20. For special permit, home occupation to run his cryptocurrency business out of that said address per Article 200-42 of the zoning bylaws of North Reading. Special permit for the use of the dwelling for a home occupation shall contain the usual and, and mandatory conditions, that being no one other than the residential occupant shall be employed therein. No more than 300 square feet shall be devoted to such use. There shall, no, there shall be no display of goods, wares, or signs related to the home occupation visible from the exterior. 
this special permit for a home occupation runs with the applicant Friedrich and is no way transferable. There'll be no customers coming to the premises and the special permit shall be valid for a period of four years. All right. Um, I have a second. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I second that motion, Maria Lockhart. Thank you. All in favor, Mr. Breen. Bob Breen, aye. Maria. Maria Lockhart, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. Congratulations, Mr. Friedrich. You may, um, once the 20 day appeal period expires, continue with your home occupancy. So best of luck with your business. Great, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for your time this evening. Absolutely, thank you for staying, you know, sitting through all the prior hearings. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting there. That's my bedtime. Okay. All right, <laughs> next one, I think we are up to, uh, Petition of Gensler, representative for Fleet Boston. So we read the public hearing. Virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, April 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Gensler, representative for Fleet Boston, CC number 88322 at 172 Park Street, Nursery MA, map 54, parcel 136, for variance from Article 200-87C11A environmental performance regulations on the North Bending Zoning Bylaws for an upgrade to lighting to meet AML GL Chapter 167B, Section 3. Do we have someone here for Gensler? Yes, hi, Amanda Johnson representing Gensler tonight. Hello, Ms. Johnson, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you all doing? We're, we're making, we're, we're great. We're, I know, we're, right? <laughs> We also have uh, Bill Sharkey, and he's a representative um, from the bank as well on the call, just for record. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Mr. Sharkey. And Ms. Johnson, can you tell us what it is that uh, you are planning to do over at, this is the Bank of, bank of America's site. Correct? It is the Bank of America. Um, can I share my screen? Yes, no? you may. Kathy, if you would. Allow that, please. Go ahead. All right, thank you. All right, let me know if everyone can see my screen. Yes, now we can. All right, perfect. So um, Bank of America is looking for a variance to add lighting to their existing site. I don't know if everyone's familiar with the Bank of America's site um, in town, um, but what we're doing is the bank does an assessment of their sites every year. And what they're looking at is life safety with foot candles. Um, and they do this throughout the entire country. So they assess every bank location, you know, does it meet the adequate lighting levels um, per the Massachusetts chapter 167B for Massachusetts locations. Um, and then what they do is they put a plan together that we're proposing for that. Um, so we have added some more lighting than what was previously there um, and we're replacing fixtures. So I can walk you through what are we um, adding, what is staying and what is being replaced to kind of give you guys a general idea of what the scope is. Perfect, thank you. Sure, so as you enter the site, um, you enter over off of this side of the building. And what they're proposing in the parking is adding these pole lights. So these are the blue fixtures that are um, located here. So we have one by the parking um, that's along the street. We have, we have some that's right along where the bank is um, in the front. We have another one at the corner of where someone would come through the drive up ATM. And then around the corner over here as well. So they are looking to put four new pole light fixtures. Uh, they are looking to also put a new light where the ATM is um, at the drive up. These green fixtures that you see are existing and they're just gonna replace, they're proposing to replace with new. And any of the ones that are in orange, as you see here, these are existing fixtures. And the light blue for, forgive me, they're re, 
going to be removed. So we are removing some fixtures in the back here, these RK ones. So that is the proposed plan. Uh, we're also, sorry, there's another light over here I missed. We're replacing um, this light on this street side where the parking is that is existing as well. So we go, so we go to this plan. I believe you guys have seen this um, as we submitted this with our variance application. And what this does is it shows the compliance area with the lighting levels. We have one that shows the landscape. Um, we have another one that shows the full lighting site calculations. And I can zoom in on any of these as we go through. And then one of them just has dimensions. And so that's what we're applying for is a variance to add um, additional lighting to this site. Okay. And so the actual bylaw that you're getting a variance from says, you know, direct or indirect lighting causing a total illumination in excess of 1.0 foot candles when measured at any point vertically above the boundary of a residence district or a residential property or right of way. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't apply to municipal street lights, which this is not. So just out of curiosity, um, sort of a comparison to the amount of illumination that's currently in place versus what's proposed. Do we have anything showing sort of a, a existing versus future proposed levels? I don't have them here. Um, let me take a look. Bill, do you recall if we have that information from the no. bank on that one location? No, it's not something that they that mm -hmm. put as a, as a standard part of their drawings. Yeah, so what they do is they do the full site calculations of um, the illumination levels, which is what you can see here that we submitted, which shows the entire site of what those levels are. Okay, so and I'm not sure that actually came in the package. Oh, I'm I, sorry. I, I uh, that um, so if if you actually blow that up just one more, just a tiny bit more, so we can see at our home screens. So the all the numbers that we see, the five point two, six point eight, three point whatever, those are um, illumination. Correct. Um, and they want it to be they there's an initiative to make it extremely bright around the bank um, for the patrons um, to feel safe, to make sure that they don't trip or fall on anything when it gets dark. You know, right now in the summer, that's, you know, as summer's coming, we don't see this as much of an issue, but you, as we all know, when we came out of winter, it gets dark early. You know, we have a various amount of patrons at different age ranges and, you know, we want to make sure it's a safe and brightly lit environment for them. And yeah, the, the, the main focus of these is um, the bank does them really at every ATM. Mm -hmm. the, the point being that these lights would be on during all hours of darkness. So it's, it's really a, a safety program for the ATM use. Correct. So that and is what is being proposed here, all of these new lights. Okay, so I see like by the ATM, which is on the bottom of the screen, it's we're looking at 12.8, 12.4 levels versus, you know, any, I guess that's the brightest spot of the site. And as we go out towards the street, where's our street side? To the left, to the left. There you go. That should be Park Street, I believe. Okay, so right around at the street level, it looks like the highest we're seeing is 3.2. Um, we saw on this part of the screen. Da, da, da. You scroll up for me. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so on the street side, we're looking at and and I will sorely admit these are numbers to me rather than I don't understand how these translate to an actual level of brightness as someone's going by. Um, but generally speaking, um, I can see the logic of having it be very bright by an ATM where someone may be coming 24 seven um, and then having it hopefully sort of 
get less bright as you get towards the public street so it's not as distracting to people driving by. Um, and are these, these are on at the same level from dusk to dawn, is that correct? Correct, correct. we don't change the lighting levels throughout the evening or anything. We, we keep it on, you know, for security reasons all hours of the night. Okay. I, I think the, the issue with this, and I, I'm just kind of guessing looking at it is, I think in the, the zoning bylaws, it, it calls for at the property line, mm -hmm. one foot candle mm -hmm. or for the right of way of the street, of one foot candle. So I think these would probably be in excess of that one, although one foot candle, I think is really residential. I think commercially, I'm not so sure there's actually a number, um, but I think but with, with this, this plan, I think it's really, we would end up being over the one foot candle allowed mm -hmm. in the street. Right. Yep, now that's, uh, that seems to be what you are requesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I, I think with, with this location, it, it appeared that this uh, sort of corner of the world here, I think it looks like it's all commercial. And I didn't see anything in the zoning bylaws that um, addressed a certain foot candle level at the property line for an abutting commercial property, so to speak. I saw it for residential. Mm -hmm. I think it's one mm -hmm. foot candle. But I, I think what the bylaw guideline is would be at the street uh, would be one foot candle allowed. So I think that's what we're yeah. looking for the variance for. And I just want, I want to double check your. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, question about it just being in a residential. So is the, is the, is the, is that the proffer that because they're not, they're interior no, to the property that it's, it's the, the brightness isn't as, as restricted by the bylaws? Yeah, I think, I think that's you know, correct, Bob. And just if, if I could, um, so the the bylaw section itself limits the amount of illumination, and it, it's not just in a residential district. I think there's three categories. Those are ors. Wow. Okay. Um, so I, at the boundary of a residence district, or a residential property, or a right of way line of a public way, and that's the I think the application here is not that we're in a residence, but that you're directly on a public way. I, I believe so, that that would be the case with this one. Mm -hmm. Which is right over here. I can highlight this on the screen so everyone can. It's this area. And Jerry, did you hear anything from, um, you said you spoke with the police chief uh, I'm sorry, the chief of police and the town planner about this lighting program. That is correct. The chief of police didn't have any, uh, didn't have any issue with the fact that it was going to be uh, additional lighting at the bank itself. Uh, he actually thought that was a good idea. And uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, if they do put the lighting in, we want to make sure that it is, it's not blinding or it's not distracting to any drivers that do pass by that location. So that's something we'd have to keep in mind um, if you decide to basically uh, give that variance. Yeah, and that would be my concern as well. I think that's why the, you know, the, the bylaws have a guideline for impact on public ways. And this is, again, it's not a, not a residence, it's in between two commercial buildings, well, post office and another um, commercial savings and then right across the street from the high school, but it is a um, um, main street coming through the center of town. 
Bob and Maria. So some... just to give a greater sense in a more practical way, would you say it's going to be twice as bright, three times as bright, you know, for, because I think we all see these, the numbers, but it's a sense of the Listen. ultimate, ultimate effect that we might be able to better get a, an idea of without actually having seen the lights turned on. Well, if you think about it in terms of what you're seeing here is, you know, one foot candle is currently what is probably on the site right now, right? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. so if we're around two or a little around two, you know, some of these are a little brighter here and there, depending on the locations. Um, it would be, you know, twice as bright would be a good way to put it. So you're going from one foot candle to two. So when you think of one foot candle, it's like um, the best way to describe it is if all the lights go out somewhere in a, in a building and the emergency light goes on, you can see just enough at the bottom to get out of a building. So it's very, it's not a very bright light. So if you went double that, it's a little bit brighter, but it's not a glaringly bright light um, where it's gonna really distract and, and be noticeable. It's gonna be very bright when you're in or in the parking lot and towards the building, but it's gonna be much softer at the roadway. So it's twice as bright, but the brightness isn't gonna be um, drastically increased. But at the same time, it's a concentrated light focus on the building. Correct. And with, which, sure, I, I understand that. And I'm, I can understand why the, the chief, the law enforcement, I mean, they want illumination, but they're kind of a 24 hour a day business. Whereas, you know, especially with the school located where it is, this is, while it is in a classic residential area, you're now going to be clearly the brightest spot on the street and on to your to your right as you with your back to your building is um is it ryers does it go yeah or the other bank and then to the other side is the post office which is um dark and you know it's it's, it's modest modestly lit um because it's a daytime business i mean i'm I understand the idea of trying to create a greater sense of safety by lighting the walkway for someone who's walking off the street to use the ATM. Um, that being said, you know, the ATM being located in the back of the building, I mean, you know, maybe it'd be safer in the front. I, I just have some, and it, it just might be a thought to be put out there that when you increase the, the just, general lighting of a focused area you know you're starting to move towards you know creating a more classic business zone and i don't know if there's enough activity i i understand bank of america's issue but you're at this while you're creating this brighter space in this with the idea of safety you're also you're making the ad the the, the image of Bank of America brighter. So, and, you know, we've spent a lot of time, we spent moments earlier discussing what the effect of um, a digital sign is going to be across the, actually, ironically, across the street view. But several weeks ago, we talked about a digital sign in a parking lot and how it could be distracting. You know, you're now going to be the brightest spot. And is, is there really a, is there really an identifiable need to go twice as bright, especially at hours that your bank isn't open for classic foot traffic? No, dis I don't know what your business uh, plan is, but I think most of the people that are using your ATM in the later evening are driving in. And if they are driving in to the drive up ATM, I believe you have one, um, Bank of America, um, you know, is there a need to have such brightness around the entire premises? That's a, that's a really interesting point, Bob, because I mean, on the one hand, we're all for public safety, but on the other hand, this is sort of a, um, it's a, a, it's a quiet area in the center of town. We, you know, you're one step off from the historic town center and the library where 
you know, not we to don't mention like- um, night, you know, fall football games are played at night. You know, the, the stadium is across the street. It's full of residents and, you know, they're going to look from the stands. Not only are they going to be looking down on the field, but behind that is going to be mm-hmm. this twice as bright site, a, a building uh, lit up like the center of a, you know, of, yeah. of and I, I, you don't I, want it to I, be would, lit up like it might be distracting in the center of town. I, I, I'm, I'm with you there, Bob. And at, at part of the, the problem here is we're looking at numbers on a, um, a layout map and it does, it's hard to understand how this would look visually in the context of the neighborhood, um, you know, next to, you know, right off from the town common and the high school. So yes, we want it to be safe, but no, we don't want it to be lit up like Walmart in the middle of the night either. So Which I don't know how we, you know, <laughs> Walmart closes at 10. I mean, they, their light lighting goes down. It mm-hmm. does, uh, you know, and fair enough. I mean, that's their business. Um, but I, your, I, and they have, don't they have, oh, Jerry does, do the businesses in town have hours of lighting? Like, do they need, like, and this is very different than than Main Street, although we wish Main Street was more like this. Um, where oh, I have not seen any hours of lighting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, not, not to say that there is. Hours is, of operation, which sort of I mean, sometimes leads, leads into that. Hmm. Yeah, much like Bank of America, when the lobby closes, the lights get shut off, turned off on the interior. That's fine. But mm-hmm. um, what if, I'd be, yes, I know I sound like the contrarian here, but, you know, is there merit to saying, look, do you really need this level of brightness at, at 11 p.m.? I don't know. I can't speak to that because I don't know your patronage and how your use, func- uh, you know, walk up use as opposed to drive up use of your, your banking operation is. Yeah, let me. I, 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 I can maybe shed, I can shed a little light on it to a certain degree if we just if I can take a quick step back. <laughs> it, you know the B of A has you know obviously you know thousands of ATMs across the country, um, and you know the idea in, in several states in the country also have state laws with minimum foot candles that banks have to provide. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts really just has a law that says banks have to have safeguards in place for the safety of their um, patrons. Part of this does become, and we find in a lot of town bylaws that yes, there are standards for how many foot candles, et cetera, et cetera, but there's always sort of a uh, special allowance made in the event of safety. And so we do these projects really, you know, everywhere. I've got 30 of them on my desk for this summer. And I think uh, in New England, we've got 80 of them planned for this year. And so these, what they do is they have just a standard design that they use for each of these just to meet an industry standard, what they believe is, is an industry standard design of so many foot candles in front of an ATM, which is similar to what they have in New York, New Jersey, Florida, Texas, California, which right is this design here. They, they do like a radius of 50 feet from the face of, a, of an ATM. And so what can happen is when they're trying to reach, meet, let's say, two foot candles inside that radius, which is what their design standard is, you'll end up with some overspill of, of lighting. And I, you know, I think that that's what we're really kind of going through here at this point is um, the overspill of the lighting 
to get to that, to meet the design standard in, in the 50 foot radius will be more in the street than you know the town's bylaws. So the way the bank looks at it is they're gonna to submit to the town a standard design. And obviously it's, you know, in, in Massachusetts, it's up to the local zoning board, whether they want to accept it or not accept it, I guess. Um, you know, for us, we have to go through the process. You know, the bank wants us to go through the process of requesting a variance. And at that point, if the town doesn't want to accept it, you know, we would just ask for comments back we would then go back to the bank and say, well, the town didn't want to approve it. Here's their comments. Do you want to redesign and have us resubmit? So, and I, I that think that all, that all makes <laughs> sense. And okay. as you're saying, if you have essentially a standard program or the bank has a standard program that they're applying uniformly, um, that may not be um, the best fit for Correct. sort of a, you know, a, a very small, small town and more importantly the, the... I, I put these uh these in certain locations in the city of boston and, and the neighbors come back and go can you please put in more lighting mm -hmm. um so you know each location could probably look you looked on absolutely you know, a little bit differently i guess right yep. um so one I, thing which it's again and unfortunately i just don't have the 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 expertise to um provide the, I think the most helpful comments. I don't know if, um, Jerry, do we have a town engineer who could help us sort of understand the, or make better suggestions to the applicant on what might be kind of appropriate lighting, given that we're really just on the edge of the historic district in town? I don't know if the town engineer has this uh, level or of knowledge. Do we have anyone? <laughs> do we have anyone who knows this stuff? Because uh, you know, we don't, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm uncomfortable uh, approving or even denying something when I just don't understand how it would impact that neighborhood. What if we did this, say in, in this case, I mean, I think um, a problem looks like it is really the light spill into the street is probably kind of the issue. I think it's it, twofold, just to, to clarify there, um, as both into the street, and that's a violation that or would require a variance under our zoning bylaws. And then the idea of uh, Mr. Breen raised with just essentially spotlighting this building again. Um, I don't know if you're familiar where this particular building is in our town, but you know we're next to the seniors, you know, the senior center, and the town library, and the high school, you don't want it to be sort of a, a beacon in that point. Um, well, I, you know, we would pose the question, the next question, I guess, realistically would be, is there any of the lighting you see on the plans that it looks like it might be acceptable? And Parts of it that you might say we really don't want to approve. I guess. So, if I might on that, so if the if the car if the idea is just to carve out, in you know particulars here, you know, I think I'll 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 echo um, what Madam Chair pointed out. Our lack of you know expertise in this um, kind of limits that. In other words, to say well. It makes sense to maybe leave the light, the additional lighting near the the walk up ATM in place because, you know, somebody is physically walking out and they should have some greater sense of safety, um, quote unquote, in the in, in in the dark, if you will. But at the same time, to say, well, this light post is okay, but that one isn't. Now we're, you know, what's the effect? I I think that I think for the benefit of of this this board that um, some greater um, expertise is needed that would be able to, to take what you know so well and give us a sense of the effect of what it will bring 
to something we don't know quite as well. And, you know, the idea that, you know, interest in Boston might be asking for more lighting. Well, you know, there you go from end to end of Boston, you could go from a very, very scenic rural almost area to as hard concrete as you're going to find. You know, there's that idea of, well, this part of Boston versus that part of Boston, uh, it to me is not only isn't it particularly relevant to North Reading, but I, you know, it's, it's a red herring, quite frankly. So um, I, I just think that the more practical point here is that um, the applicant to their benefit should um, revisit the plan. And, you know, one thing also in particular, if there is, if you're just following a, an industry standard and a guideline standard that doesn't basically have a, a definition, a ceiling or even a floor for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, you know, the idea that you can't dim your lights at night um, shouldn't be off your table. You know, the area, um, maybe the light gets brighter when a car approaches, maybe the light gets brighter when a, a walk up is, it? you know, your Bank of America. I mean, I, I think you can find that that is as something that might ass assuage in particular my hesitation to uh, to approve or permit um, this. And I want to- Yeah, I mean, the, the, only, the only problem with that is it can be, you know, subject to human error. Um, you know, you, but you again, kind that, of, that, that burden falls to you. And, it you know, that burden doesn't fall to us, this idea no, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm taking a line on this. No, that isn't the case. Contractors are constantly putting lighting, um, you know, sense, sensor lighting, and you might say, well, you know, it might do this, it might do that. Yes, it might. But again, I have every. I have a very strong opinion now that if this plan were just allowed as it is set forward, and if that's what Bank of America wants to do, this is what we do in Texas and New York and in, in Boston. Well, if that if it's if it's if it's just a, you're drawing a no pun intended a very bright line, um, I I think that that hard and fast isn't um, going to be particularly welcomed by me on behalf of this of this um, of this town. No, I don't. You know, I don't think that's what we're we're presenting. But you know, it's we've come in with a, a baseline plan that. Yeah, you know, we really give to every community. And most certainly the community can reject the plan. And we're not, um, you know, some communities accept it, others don't. Others will accept it. While, we're, while we're still the, talking, scroll to the, the diagram with the existing conditions. Well, the existing conditions, um, well, as they exist, would be anything without the blue lights. Okay, but that. it doesn't show what the, the current lumens are. Correct. We do not, right, correct. Okay. We, okay. Were not, we were not provided that. So okay. um, but, uh, the brightness enough. of well, the lights are- Looking at something blue. that we could try to, try to get some information just to even on um, you know, magnitude of change, but without that, we're, we're kind of, we're a bit lost here. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have enough information to um, approve this. I don't know if we have anyone in town who can help provide us with information on this, or if you have anyone um, on your team who can um, provide us something, sort of a comparison of old to, of old to new or old to proposed, um, just so we could better understand what we have here. Um, I, I don't think we have, we clearly don't have enough information to approve it in its current state. So um, we could continue this to see if there's additional information you can provide or we can obtain through the town. I don't, you know, I just don't know does, that we- By any chance is, is there a, does the town have a civil engineer? That's what I was asking our building inspector earlier whether the, or not we have an engineer who the, could the town the town does have a civil engineer but i don't think this is his expertise 
Well, sometimes, you know, a lot of times they'll deal with parking lots and, and that type of thing. A lot of times when we do these, we'll get a civil engineer involved because they'll, they'll have to deal with parking lot lighting, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. It just may be one, you know, an avenue to try. Do you have anything within the area that's fairly, that's close by that, that uh, pose a, as an example? Good, good question, Jerry. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, guys, I can go through my files and see what we've done over the last five years um, and send you a listing of it, I guess. Yeah, if there's anything nearby that's where you've implemented this, that would be, could be informative. Okay, let me, give me one second, let me, just take a look right where we last yeah, and, year. Yeah, and, and you're, uh, you're welcome to provide that. Not which for it. Roslindale, Lynn, Methuen, we did a couple of jobs. Um, Boston, Boston, Wakefield, Worcester. What, uh, where was it in Wakefield? Wakefield to Smith Street. Actually, that might be sort of the same type of location. Diamond Street in Boston, Boylston Street in Boston, Stoughton. Yeah, Wakefield might be the closest. So I would propose that uh, we continue this public hearing um we can we can see if we can get any other information from our town personnel we can perhaps take a look drive by to smith street which does not look oh that's over by their shaws that's that's not well anyway that could be interesting to see um and is that with the same program same lighting level that you're suggesting here correct yeah, that, that would be the same design. Okay. It's it's different. It's not a standalone building, so it's kind of curious how that might be done. I might is be curious possible? to know. Is Go it ahead. possible we could get a current level as well, just to see like a, like we've been talking about this, um, the the brightness of it currently, so we could compare it. Yeah, I mean, I can get a copy of the plan that we used for Wakefield. Not for, not Wakefield's. I think well, Bill. I um, think what we're asking for our, the existing site. Oh, you'll give us something the existing. Because I think all of us have an idea of how. I mean, I drive by it, and I know it's just congruent with the other buildings there. I, I mean, I, my only concern is I wouldn't want it to be like super bright, standing out against everything else. I I like the idea of the safety, but. The super brightness, it has to go with the town. This is like a really old fashioned kind of town. So, yeah. All right. So, if um, I would suggest that we continue this, if you can provide the board anything on um, any of the specs on the current conditions, so we can understand the magnitude of increase that's being requested. Um, and we can sometime in our copious free time, take a look at two Smith Street, um, get a feel of how that, I mean, I think that's that's much more um, densely developed right there. It's a more of a, it's a commercial strip rather than this little bank of yours. But, um, um, you know, and I could also pull out, uh, I can go through a list of what we've done the last few years. Yeah. See if there's what anything else. Yeah, Bill, what if we provide a list of maybe some applicable ones we can maybe pull together and, and send those to the board? Would that be helpful as well of ones that might align with a standalone? Yeah, the financial centers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Is, is this this program, is this, being, is this being done to all Bank of America locations? Like in other words, it, you make this approach to every Bank of America branch office 
financial center, maybe even a standalone ATM throughout yes. the state. So, so the ones New that, <laughs> okay, that's Across fine. The so, country. If, so if, if there's three bank of America's in Wakefield and you re retro or re, re you replace lighting in one, the other two and the other two didn't get replaced. You could, it's a fair assumption to say that the other two denied the application for variance. Well, because yeah, otherwise you do it, right? Yeah, but we don't, uh, how can I put it? Um, I, I don't know the criteria that the bank uses to, in other words, I've, I, this is the sixth year I work for them. I do 20 of these jobs per year. They have not, it's not something that they rolled out and said, by the end of 2022, we want every single bank to be done. Um, they are trying to put a push on over the next few years to get these done. Um, so they've kind of ratcheted up the amount. I think in New England, we're doing 80 of them this year. Uh, if, while you're looking at oh. your um, records of what has been done, uh, would you look also particularly at Andover and Reading, which are our abutting neighborhoods? Yeah, I and, think we did do Andover. And I might ask if there's, if you could um, identify locations where a grant was authorized, but they didn't go to the highest level requested. So in other words, it sounds as if Bank of America approaches a location asked to increase the lighting and the town might come back and say, well, that's too bright. But instead of going to twice as bright, well, only you were okay with you going a quarter brighter. So is this really what's at play here? Uh, a negotiation of sorts to find no. out where that acceptable um, agreement can be met? Because if that's the case, then that changes this um, approach and relationship in a way for me. No, I mean, I think, you know, I, I don't think negotiation is probably the right term. I mean, I think we've run into some situations where there's, as we look for approvals, and I, you know, we say this to landlords all the time also, is that, um, you know, there's really, it's sort of yes, you know, we'll, we'll allow you to do it. No, we're not going to allow you to do it. Or we like parts of the, we'll approve parts of the plan, but we're not going to approve the entire plan, so to speak. So yeah, and, you know, and yeah, we'll, if there's something that, you know, and what we have to do, and, and I hate to say it, but, you know, the, the bank can be very process oriented. Um, so in other words, we, we have to go through every step. And if, if any change is requested, we have to write it up, send it through to the bank security, you know, to the bank's lighting consultants. They then have to go to the bank security department and request sort of a waiver that in this particular location, they changed the standard so to speak, or they didn't, it wasn't all allowed. It was, there were 10 original fixtures, eight were approved. Do you guys want us to just put in the eight or do you want us to not do this location? So. Okay. And, and something I think for the board to consider, and I'll just kind of um, throw that out there to the board that um, we do have, um, I think they have not just proposed, but um, new guidelines for what would be the Main Street Overlay District, which has um, a whole section on lighting standards, which require you know, you know shielding on lights, uh, limits the intensity um, at grade, limits the height of light fixtures. Um, you know, I think given that the the town is trying to move towards um, 
more consistent design across town, that that is something that um, we should be uh, at least looking at and considering in the context of this as well. Because uh, again, um, I think I'm surprised that you just need a variance for um, the, the overflow onto the, the public way which is what you requested, I would think that you would need approval either from CPC or us for each new actual poll going in and the location and then the impact on the total site. So I'm, I'm surprised that um, by the, the narrow request. I, yeah, I think I you were we... starting here as a starting point. Um, we, yeah. we have for you, it, or not for you, but in general, what we do is we do have packages that put together that show exactly what you're um, alluding to. So for example, you know, here are the fixtures that we'd be replacing with um, these new fixtures. This is what the fixture looks like. Here's the specification, you know, it's this fixture, but in bronze, um, you know, same thing throughout. So we, we do have something to that nature as well. Um, but usually sometimes step one is, is that you know we're approving we're, we're applying for that variance you know if there's a problem right off the bat with the lighting levels um you know sometimes it's not worth to put into the application well here's all the fixtures as well if we already know we have a problem with pole fixtures mm -hmm. um so sometimes that's where we start off to see where things are going so yeah, we yeah, we do have the light fixtures we do have all of this as well if that information is something you would like to look at so we I mean, did yeah. we start with this job it was originally with historic or something and then we get directed so we started with planning and then they directed us to zoning it would be very helpful if we had that history because this has just come to us in isolation and this if there's if it's already been vetted or discussed at planning. no i think I, I think when we originally approached the town we were um uh, pointed towards one board, whether it was historic or planning. And then I think actually the day of the meeting, we got an email saying, we've had second thoughts. We'd prefer you guys to go to the zoning, I guess. I would be very interested in understanding and hearing about that because I think this, um, it, it wouldn't be appropriate for us to take this out of context with the review of the, the larger plan. And I would not be comfortable granting a variance again if if the whole site layout has not been vetted and approved by planning. So I think they're I think you're going in the, the wrong order. Um, um, but I would be so, happy. Yes, yeah, so I have an email here. We went to um, Daniel McKnight, and that's the town planner. Mm -hmm. And the he that, planner that was Senate. the first um, person that we did to summarize the conversation. And we were supposed to go to join the CPC meeting mm -hmm. and then they sent us over here. Yeah. So that I would probably offer that with because of the the black and white of our bylaws, they probably okay. wanted to discuss yeah. it and yeah. figure that that's a, a jump point. Because yeah. those other boards have a little bit more uh I would I take the position they have a little bit more of leeway if you will and i think that you know they would ultimately tell you that well they could they could approve all of this and then it could just fail because of you know the light level that they can't we can't move away from because of as mm -hmm. the chair noted it's applicable over those three cool. um purposes that i think it's just the practical on this yeah so but i have it i, I can I can quote the email here for you. I, I did just pull it up. So she um, she says to summarize the conversation this morning for full approval of light of lighting as submitted, Bank of America would need a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals because the illumination level is higher than what is allowed in the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. The Planning Commission would like to wait on that approval before issuing any approval to modify the site plan. Um, so that is how uh, the long and short of it is how we ended up here. So we did start in planning and they sent us to uh, zoning. Okay. All right, well, 
I think it sounds like this needs to be looked at and maybe we need to have a joint meeting or have some collaboration, but I don't think um, uh, we're not going to just uh, give a, a variance and then send it back to planning for them to then look at it and that it, it's it, it has to be done more holistically than that. That just doesn't make sense to me. All right, that being said, I, we're, we are way beyond schedule. We have another applicant we need to um, talk to this evening. So I suggest that we uh, continue this to our next meeting. Kathy, do we have a date for May? I think it has to be May 12th or later because the deadline would be gone for the fifth. Oh yeah, that fifth doesn't work for me anyway. Uh, blah, blah, blah. April, May. So our normal, our normal date would be the 12th. Um, if we, let's, let's put it on the, let's put it on the calendar for the 12th, unless there's a, um, we have an immediate conflict with, um, either of the board members, Bob and Maria, is that 12th look okay no, at this um, moment? May 12th is good for me. Thank you, Bob. Maria, is that okay? Yes, it looks okay for me as well. Great. Uh, would the applicant like to request a continuation until May 12th on this public hearing? Yes, yes. Great. I would make a motion to approve a Continuance, although I don't even know that requires a motion, but all in favor. Bob Ray, I, I don't think we need a motion on this, but anyway, we're continuing this until May 12th. I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. It's getting late. So we uh, thank you very much. And we will see if um, we still have one more applicant who has been very patiently waiting for us this evening. All right, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, folks. Bye. Thank you. Tonight. Uh, last public hearing, I believe, first the public hearing Thursday, April 14th. It is still April 14th, 2022, 7 p.m. Petition of Michael Laws for a special permit to run a detail and auto repair shop business located at 3340 Main Street, North Reading, MA, Map 12, Parcel 53. Uh, Mr. Laws, are you still here? Ooh. All right, if Mr. Laws is, has given up for the evening, um, I say we continue this until our next hearing. Are there, I see there are a few more people here. Can I just ask if these are um, residents who have waited for hours and hours to comment on this? I believe so. I can see some of um, our neighbors' names on here as well as my boyfriend who, um, wanted to speak as well on this. He's a police officer and just got put on a call. So I guess- Yes, I, I also have a butter and was, was waiting for this. Yes, yes so, me as well, Joanne Hoja. What, what I would say is you all have been <laughs> patienter than anyone. And I'm happy to open this and let you, let you voice your concerns to us. Um, the applicant's not here, so we will end up extending this or continuing it till next month. Um, unless we... You want me to try and call him? Shit, shit, shit. Because I, I did read it. We opened it, so we are open. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, these... these for people who have been waiting for hours listening to the, listening to us go on um, should have their opportunity to speak. And yeah, if you want to see if Michael's still around or we can, we can. 
I don't Maybe. believe anyone by that name was ever on the call, unless it was oh, a phone number that was not, um, didn't have a name attached. Oh. So, point of, of order on this, if applicant does not show, we have in the past been into the continuance um, in an effort to fully vet things. But I do have a quandary here. I mean, you guys, you're here. And I am happy to, I am happy to take input from any of you, but it's, um, I will say, you're not gonna get your full opportunity to ask, ask questions that could then be answered by the applicant since I have no applicant. Um, is there anybody, is there anybody here from JSA, L, L, JSA, L, the limited liability corp that's the landlord for the property? Let's see. Um, it's sort of like count, counting heads here. There's the yeah. three of us on the board, Kathy, Mr. Noel, our enforcement officer, our public access um, person. Thank you for being here. And then one, two, three of you, Christina, Alex, and Christopher, who I must, are you all abutters? Yes, yes, and Christopher, I'm, I was, Christopher is, he's, but I, we live together. He's listening in from work, uh, but just got actually called out to a call. So I don't think he's gonna be able to talk. Well, fair enough. And thank you for him being a police officer and helping um, protect our town. And, and Joanne is a um, neighbor as well. Oh, okay, and of course, thank you, Joanne. And there's so four of us. Great. Oh, and you're moving the, my little hedge, my little, well, stamps are moving around. Yeah, it'll, um, it'll move around based on who has their video on and who's actually talking. Okay. Um, guys, I'm going to let open the floor up to you now if you want. If you want to just save this to next month, what was it, May 14th, um, we could I mean, really more for your benefit because you showed up than the applicant put this first on the agenda so you don't have to wait through an evening. Um, we very much want to hear your input and we want you to have opportunities to ask questions about this. Um, I just, I don't want you to, I mean, we're listening, but you're, you're not getting the full benefit of your, of your time here. So I will, I will not say you can't talk. If you want to talk to us now, you're, you know, just pick an order and go. Um, otherwise, and you still, you may talk again a month from now, if this comes back up and doesn't go away. Uh, I just, um, I know you have very patiently waited through a lot of hearings to get an opportunity. So uh, up, up to you, I leave it. So if someone wants to speak, feel free to speak. Abs absolutely. I think I'm gonna wait until, um, until the next meeting, I guess. Um, we and tried to get a hold of him, and um, I couldn't leave a message, and he didn't pick up the phone. So, he won't be. Well, thank you all for, I mean, taking the time and being dedicated and being interested in showing up, because that's that uh, we we want the input from the town. And I think you've heard me more than once ask people to comment from the community. That's why we are here. We want to. We're here to protect your interests and to um to get your input so if you um, i will ask one question is uh, of course if you can continue to the next meeting is there any sort of documentation that's been provided that we could possibly see about what they're proposing to do because at least speaking for myself all i got was the letter as an abutter saying that there was going to be a public hearing about this but i really don't know anything about what's being proposed so of um, course and uh, Christina, says, would we you have, want me to bring up his pictures? Yes. Would you? And did we get? We can we post that on our ZBA website so it's accessible to residents? That would be really handy, I would think. Um, I can try to do that. All right. Um, but just for this, for this, um, I will say two things. How about if you, Kathy, can just bring it up right now? But if you email Kathy tomorrow. 
are you open tomorrow or are we is town hall open yeah one o'clock yeah um if you email her she can forward you kathy i'm volunteering you to send a copy of what the applicant submitted to any of these abutters who would like it it's it is public information it's at town hall um i do like the idea of being able to post this somewhere on our website so you know with the uh, maybe going forward, Kathy, if we can post it with the agenda, anything that's been submitted, so residents can look at it in advance as well. Okay, I'll look into that. That would be fantastic. Um, so basically, they are proposing some, and, and we're just going off of what we see here, the sketch plan. Um, it's a special permit to run and deep a detail and auto repair shop business. And you know, we've got this sketch plan. That's all I got. Is it? There may be another page to it. Yeah. Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah. And there's that's. This is kind. Of, this is what we have. Um, you're welcome to request an email of what's in the. In the file, and we will. I, I was speaking just for myself, but at least I have a, a number of questions for the applicant when they are here. So. Is there anyone um, environmentally from the town that we could also get in touch with? Um, I know probably a decent portion of our concerns is, and I know Payne's was there before, but wasn't necessarily operational, um, the environmental impacts of having, you know, an auto body shop and chemicals and oil so close. So I, I think conservation, yeah, so that would be Conservation Commission. Okay. And it would be you know, only to the extent that these they're in a, a wetlands resource area mm -hmm. or having an impact on the resource area. And I haven't seen a plan here that shows um, setbacks from the, the wetland resource areas. But to the extent there um, that it is you know, within a hundred feet of a wetland. Yeah, not, yeah, it's not just the pond, but also like the land in between. I, I like directly about this, the land in between me and this property is zoned mm -hmm. as wetland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then um, if that's, if they are doing any new, disturbing any soil within a wetland resource area, then it should go to conservation as well. And they, they've got their whole, the, they would have a separate hearing on it. I haven't. Um, I can. Send and I, I haven't her heard. If you want. I'm sorry. What? I was. I, I was going to say I can send them her the conservation agent's email if they would like to contact her. Perfect. That's wonderful. All um, right. I just have one other quick question. I know it's getting late. Um, is a, a public record to know beyond his name, the address of the applicant or his business address? Um, I know there's some concerns with another business he may own in town um, and some legal issues that they've had. But I don't so know you, necessarily if it's the same person just by his name alone. You can see anything that's in the file. There's. Um, there's a letter of intent for a lease. There's these two sketch plans. Uh, there's the application itself. So whatever is in the file, you are welcome to go into town hall to the, the desk at uh, the zoning zoning board and look at the uh, look at what's in there. Thank you. Think, Noah. And is, is there anything in the file also around um, noise? Or I see uh, nothing. I don't see anything on that. It's it's pretty slim, right? Okay. So far. Because I'll say that but, that was also that was also one of my concerns. I work from home full time and about this directly. So um, at least from where I am, I can hear businesses on the other side of twenty eight sometimes. So I'm concerned about having a um, like I, I can hear the music from the Big Dipper in my in my house if the windows are open. Um, wow. so, yeah, so I'm a bit concerned about having an auto detail shop right next door that is going to be very loud, especially mm -hmm. as I'm trying to work during the day, um, in addition to some of the other concerns. And I would also add um, one of the other concerns I had was also there's already three auto body shops within a mile of this site. 
like I can walk to Mass One Auto Body, Scotty's Tire, the Subaru dealership, and there's others. So I'm also curious if there would actually be enough demand generated if we were to put an auto body shop in this location. So I think that the noise and hours of operations are all uh, very real questions to, to be concerned about and ask in terms of market saturation. That's a little bit more of a, you know, them undertaking business risk, but um, um, I, think I would uh, I would offer also for the applicants and also for the board to keep in mind uh, this address as submitted at, at least another, if not multiple applications for various uses. Um, and to that end, I think uh, it's an interesting, um, if you're going to, if you, while you're, while anybody's in searching the uh, public record, they might just want to not just search the name, but also the, um, the property address. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, your, your butters, um, there's, there's been a history of issues with this property. There's been significant efforts, I believe, to clean up this property. We want to keep those good efforts and go move forward. We don't want to backtrack here, mm -hmm. um, but we def absolutely need, the board needs clarification on which proposal is in front of us, what this means in, in detail. Um, and, and then, and then we can talk to the applicant and yourselves about that. Um, that being said, I think I know it's, it's late. Everyone has uh, been wonderful just hanging in there and going through these hearings this evening. Um, I, as I said, there's a, you're, you're welcome to look at the file at town hall tomorrow or anytime after that. And we will, I, I'd like to, to close this, actually to continue this public hearing until next month to the 14th, I believe it was of May. And maybe let people go have the yeah, human sure. left in their evening. Yes. Um, is there anything that you want me to convey to him about these uh, sketches? Like, should he, are these okay to review or do you need something more? We're gonna need more detail. Okay. Oh, I <laughs> not, to, not, to, not to dance around that, but you, you, this is, we can have a, a initial, we could have some sort of initial conversation about this, but this would not be um, something in the, in, that we could approve in final form. Ooh. That's not consistent with what we've required of any other applicant. Do you want stamp drawings or? I don't know that we need stamp drawings. And first off, we just need to, we don't even know what they're really planning here. We need, we need some information. I don't see this as being a, this may not be a single meeting event, just counting whenever we first start. So. And the more information they can provide us, the more helpful it will be both to the board and for the residents to understand what's going on. How about that? Okay. All right. I am now closing. I'm continuing this. I can't close it. I am continuing it to May 14th. May 12th. May. It's a, I thought it was the 14th. May 12th. <laughs> it's a it's a Thursday. It's the second Thursday of May, the 12th. All right. And, uh, can we can we move to put it as first matter? Yes, please. For the benefit of the um the abutters. And thank you for being willing, even though it is so late, for letting us ask questions to, to get started. We, we very much do appreciate that. Absolutely. You. you guys have, you know. There were other things you could have done tonight. I, I very, I'm very <laughs> much aware. So we'll let you go do a little bit of one of those. And we will see, uh, hopefully, all of you in, in a month. I appreciate you, you coming. And if, um, Kathy, if for any reason you hear from the applicant that they are not going to come next month, would you um, yes, maybe let these let, let us and these four um, uh, residents who made an effort to come know? Can you so give me your addresses so I can look up your um, information? Can you, can you pop an email to Kathy tomorrow? Okay. And what, what's, the, what's the email address for Kathy? Can you drop that in the chat? Mm. 
in court. It is K Morgan at northreadingma.gov. That's probably easier. Is it K A Morgan? K Morgan. And if K you see Morgan your little box there, like K Morgan at northreadingma.gov. We'll also have um, Jose next meeting also for 340, the owner. Well, they should get together <laughs> and, <laughs> and come in together. I think uh, Jose wanted to know if um, Michael was approved, then he might have dropped his. That's a feeling that I got. So well, we'll it might be good out. to have them together. All right. All right. Uh, we're done. All right, just, if, if I can ask one logistical question, with this being continued, will we get another letter in the mail with with uh, details about the Zoom link? So that we uh, have I don't think you do get another letter, but Kathy, it's is it it's be the be same Zoom link. Same Zoom. Okay. Same, oh, okay. same information. Has it been the yeah, same okay. one every time? Have I just yeah. not noticed? That? <laughs> That's brilliant. I do a personal one instead of a general, and it gives you the same one every time. Too many zooms. I did not recognize the same one every time. All right, folks, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let me go. This has been enough. All right. Oh my gosh. Um. So very quickly, do you want to? Um, can I move to accept the um, minutes um, from our zoning board of appeals meeting February 10th uh, of this year? You want to list them all out? Just list them all in one. Uh, as seven. well as the um, minutes Everything. for the uh, March 10th, 2022 meeting as well, which included a, uh, an executive uh, session. Thank you. Um, do I have a second? I'm Maria Lockhart, second that motion. Beautiful. All in favor? Bob Ray and I. Maria Lockhart, I. I like the two as well. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a motion to close this because as much as I enjoy being with each and every one of you. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. Everyone. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, nice Thank you person all. at Public Access. It's a marathon meeting. Um, have a lovely holiday. Thank you. Thank you.